hey everyone welcome back to my channel and the same series that is a session initiation protocol response codes today i'm gonna discuss about the second part for this 4xx first part i have already discussed in the previous lecture second part i'm gonna discuss today and then it will contain the third part as well in this 4xx request failure and then we'll discuss about this 5xx and 6xx so let me share my whiteboard so that we can discuss about that particular 4xx messages okay so for 4xx messages i hope uh, everybody has seen the previous lecture on 4xx right that means request failure let me just write it on request failure and now today i'm gonna discuss about the remaining mass remaining response code starts with uh, we have discussed from 400401 till 410 gone now i'm going to discuss about the 413 which says request entity too large right so i'm going to discuss about 413 request entity too large then we will be having 414 414 which says request URI too long. Then we have 415 unsupported media type. So most probably all the messages, uh, the name itself says what that particular message means. 415 unsupported media. Then we have 416 unsupported URI scheme then i'll be having a four to zero bad extension and then uh, i think i'm missing one after 416 that would be 417 uh unknown resource something unknown resource priority 420 bad extension 421 most probably extension required 417, 420, 421, then I'll be having 423, uh, interval to brief, then I'll be having 480, temporarily unavailable. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, I'm going to discuss about all these nine in this particular lecture. So starting with the first one or we already know about 4xx, what that particular, what, what these particular 4xx request failure messages means. These are actually definite failure responses from a particular server we are getting, right? And usually whenever we are getting this 4xx request failure messages, user agent client should not retry the same request without doing any modification. Right, because that will already again it will be failed because four xx means failure. If you do if you do send the request again without any modification, then it will definitely fail again as well. Right. So now let's start with this one that is four one three request entity too large. Okay, what this means? That means your particular server is refusing to process a request server is actually refusing to process a request why it is uh, actually refusing to process a request as the name again indicates it says 413 request entity too large right the server is refusing to process a request because request entity body is larger than the server is willing to process that is why your server is actually refusing it what this particular means is so why server is refusing because the request entity body is actually larger than the server is willing to process that particular request. That is why you were getting this 413 request entity to large response message, right? And the server might, I can say may or may not, but we can say the server may close the connection to prevent the client from continuing the same request again and again. So your server may uh, close the connection as well. Here, server may close the connection 
in order we can say in order to prevent the same message in order to prevent um, in order to prevent we can say getting the same message from client right it can contain it can close the connection as well right now we have uh, next one is 414 request uri too long right uh in this in the previous one 413 we can say one more thing uh if this condition is temporary one thing if the condition i'm talking about this one still 413 if this request entity too large, if this condition is temporary, right, then the server should include a retry after header field, right? Server should include, if this condition is temporary, I'm just talking about for the temporary. Server should include a retry after header field to indicate, to indicate that this is, temporary right and after this much time client can try again this request right that all depends on the server right if that is temporary then it can just mention it right then we have this one 414 request uri too long here server is actually refusing to service the request. It says request URI too long. Server is actually again refusing to service the request because request URI is longer than what then the server is willing to interpret, right? Here, the server is refusing to service the request because request URI is longer. Previously request entity body is larger. Here request URI is longer than the server is willing to interpret. That is why it is sending request URI too long. That's what the name says, request URI, this is request entity, right? Then we have 415 unsupported media type. Again, same thing, name suggests unsupported media type. What that means, it indicates that the body of the request is in, we can say body of the request is in non-supported format body of the request is in a non-supported format right and your server must return a list of acceptable formats it says it's a non-supported right then server must return a list of we can say acceptable formats right by using we can say accept fail or we can say accept encoding or accept language header field right server must return a list of acceptable formats using these particular message use these particular we can say methods accept accept encoding or accept language right that is our 415 unsupported media type if you are looking for any training on SIP, then you can uh, come to this sipsense.com. So you can just go to Google and once you type sipsense, then you will be able to see the first link, which is sipsense.com. And once you scroll it down, you will be able to see three courses. As here, you can see SIP Basics, SIP Foundation, and SIP Advanced. SIP Basics is free of cost. And then we have this SIP Foundation and SIP Advanced courses. If you would like to purchase any of these courses, either SIP Foundation or SIP Advanced, you can use my uh, coupon code that is technical hyphen venture. And let me show you how you can enroll it. So once we click on this SIP Advanced, you will be able to see two courses again that will, first one would be enterprise, another one enterprise plus SSC that is SIP school certification. Let's say I'm gonna click on this one select and after that you need to just fill out your details, full name, position and all. And here you can apply my discount code that is technical hyphen venture. So once we apply this one, you will get a discount of 33% and now your checkout value would be 201. Previously it was 300. Then we have 416 unsupported URI scheme. That means request URI is unknown to the server, simple. 
unsupported URI scheme, that means request URI is unknown to that particular server. Correct. Then we have this 417 unknown resource priority. Right, 417 unknown resource priority. That means 417 response will be sent when there was a resource priority option tag, but no resource priority header was found. What this means, 417 unknown resource priority resource, but name says resource priority is unknown. So that means this message is sent when there is a resource priority option tag, right? But no, no, we can say no resource priority header found. Right. Whenever there is a resource priority option tag, but no resource priority header option, that means you will get this 417 unknown resource priority. Correct. After that, we will be having another 1420 bad extension. Right. Bad extension. Is this here the extension? Doesn't mean the your extension number 123456 something. No. Bad extension means the server did not understand the protocol extension specified in the uh, proxy require we can say or required header field. 420 bad extension mean server did not understand server did not understand the protocol extension right which is specified in uh, we can say proxy require field or uh, uh, require header field something right if the server uh, server did not understand the protocol extension, which is specified in proxy require or require proxy require header field, right? Again, in the same response as well, the server should include a list of unsupported extensions in an unsupported header field, right? Server should uh, include a list of unsupported extension so it will send this to the client server will send this list to the client like these these are the list of unsupported extensions i am not supporting these extensions and where it will uh, list down all the particular unsupported extensions it will be in an unsupported header field in the response right that will be under unsupported header field then we have 421 extension required, right? 421 extension required. Now you can say it's also again, not the same thing, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, numbering extension. No, again, 421 extension required. That means the extension required by the server is not listed in the supported header, right? Here, server did not understand the protocol, but here extension required that means the server is asking for, for the particular extension, right? But that means, but this particular extension means the extension required by the server is not listed in the supported header field, right? And whatever response it will give, response with the status code must contain a required header field listing the required extension. That means this 4 to 1 extension required whenever you are getting this particular message, it will contain a status code and that will contain that response will contain a require header field. Right, require header field, which will be having a list of required list of required extensions. Right that will be your uh, 4 to 1 extension required thing right after that uh, we will be having this 4 to 3 interval to brief right now here server is actually uh, interval to brief here we can say server is actually uh, rejecting the request we can say server is rejecting the request because expiration time of the resource refreshed by the request is too short. Why the server is rejecting the request? Because 
the expiration time of the resource refreshed by the request is too short. That is why it will send this 4 to 3 interval to brief. That means the interval is very short, right? Request is too short. And that particular response can be used by a registrar to reject a registration whose contact header field expiration time was too small, right? This is actually related with the timer, right? Expiration time, if that is way too short, then it will send this forward to the interval too brief and the response will be used by a registrar to reject the registration. It will reject the registration where contact header field expiration time is too small, correct? Then we have this one, 480480 temporarily unavailable, correct? 480 temporarily unavailable, we can say, let me just do this thing so that it will be up. Okay, 480 temporarily unavailable. So it indicates that request, uh, we can say, a requested recipient is currently unavailable. That's just temporarily unavailable, right? It indicates that the request recipient is currently unavailable. But that means, that means, uh, we can say Collie's end system mainly, uh, not the end system actually, Collie's end point or end system, yeah. Collie's end system was contacted successfully. That means contacted successfully there, right? Collie's end system was contacted successfully, but Collie is temporarily, we can say, uh, temporarily or we can say call is currently not available or unavailable, right? That means call is and system was contacted successfully, but the call is currently unavailable. And why it is currently unavailable? That is the question, right? So currently unavailable, uh, we can say, for example, uh, maybe, maybe we can say it's not logged in, right? Or maybe it's logged in, but it has uh, activated DND feature that is do not disturb, right? That means that is temporarily not logged in. That is also temporarily. And if it's activated the do not disturb, that is also temporarily unavailable, right? And then the response should indicate a header field, right? Where it will say a better time to reach or better time to call. And where that response will be in, it will be in retry after header field, right? That will be in retry after header field, correct? That is our 480 temporarily unavailable, right? So now this 480 temporarily unavailable is there. So now we have discussed about all these four XX in this particular lecture. And in the next one, I'm gonna discuss about the rest of the four XX messages starting with 481, call doesn't exist or loop detected, maybe too many hopes, 486 busy here, request terminated, like, like these kind of things in, in the next lecture, right? If you, uh, if you have learned something from this video, then please hit like and let me know in the comment section how was this session going on. And then please, if you are new to my channel, then please subscribe it and please press the bell icon as well so that you will be able to receive notifications of all my videos, all my upcoming videos. Thank you.